All right, so hello everyone. Uh, I'm Brian Mann. I am the founder and creator of CyberSci-O. Uh, today I'll be talking about some best practices when writing end-to-end -end and integration tests in Cypress. Specifically, we'll go deep into some approaches at how to model your tests based on a real application. Uh, we'll talk about how to write effective tests in isolation, freeing yourself from page objects, or uh, what I consider to be legacy patterns. We'll dissect and choose an effective testing strategy for logging into your application. And we'll also look at some really powerful ways that you can take back control of your app by leveraging direct access to its state. And we'll be implementing everything you see here today with Cypress. So for those of you who haven't used it, you might be wondering, well, what is it? Well, Cypress is a free and open sourced MIT licensed testing tool written entirely in JavaScript. Cypress spawns and drives the browser exactly like you do manually in development. Now, Cypress is most often compared to Selenium or WebDriver, but it's not built on either one. Cypress makes it easy to write and debug quality tests by enabling you to test in a way that's never really been possible before. So let's take a peek of it in action. The first thing that you'll notice is that Cypress provides you a visual interface to indicate to you which tests and which commands are running. It makes it trivial to test complex user interactions like drag and drop, or to automatically wait for elements and content to appear. You can test highly interactive applications with dialogues, uh, including responsive mobile uh, web testing. You can even programmatically control your applications and state directly without going through the UI. You can alter the network by intercepting, delaying, or even waiting for requests to be responded to. And this makes it easy to test edge cases, whether it's an empty view or even uh, when your server is down. And um, all the commands in Cypress uh, that Cypress executes are interactive. So for instance, as you hover over them, Cypress restores the application to a snapshot of when that command ran. Uh, action commands indicate the hitbox of the coordinates where an event took place. And even clicking on a command will restore the UI to that moment in time and output important debugging information to your console uh, and dev tools. All right. So for what it's worth, I originally came up with the uh, inspiration for Cypress uh, while listening to a talk at JSConf quite a while back. And uh, that was the first commit. And today, we've had over 11,000 of them. Um, and exactly 1,222 days after my initial commit, we finally released our public beta uh, late last year. Now, to demonstrate the best practices in these slides, we're going to be using a real-world application that stresses our tests uh, the way that real apps that you're building do. So for the remainder of this talk, we'll use a sophisticated example app uh, called Conduit. Conduit is a Medium.com clone uh, built with React and Express. Uh, it's got a full-blown authentication layer uh, backed by MongoDB, enabling you to create users and log in. We can see a global list of articles. We can filter them by tag. Uh, we can favorite articles, which increment the count. You can see article details. Uh, you can add comments. You can also delete those worthless comments. Um, and we can also see author details. Uh, favorite articles, um, and create uh, new, uh, new article posts. And there's more than this app does, uh, but it gives you, this gives you a pretty good overview, right? All right, so to kick off our tests, let's go through an exercise together of breaking them down and deciding how we should organize them. So Conduit, this app, accepts both anonymous and authenticated users, and the header's behavior is different based on the state. So for users not logged in, I test that this welcome banner appears and that these links have the right href attribute. For logged in users, I test that the links match the data model of the current user with also the right href attributes. And even though this, this header is utilized in every other page, its behavior can be tested independently and in isolation from all the other specs. And therefore, I create a header spec that will solely test this behavior. All right. I'd also create a login spec right, to test the various states of logging in. Uh, the login page is a mission critical page that should be fully covered by tests, right? enough to give you 100% confidence that it's working, because anything going wrong with this page would be absolutely disastrous. right? So we should verify things like uh, the page greeting or uh, the link for signing up for an account. right? We should test the input placeholders and ensure that the form submits when clicking the sign in button or by hitting enter while focused on an input. And naturally, we should test uh, each error state right, uh, related to an invalid email and or password. And upon a successful form submission, we should also test that the URL is redirected uh, back to the home page. Right? 
Okay. For register, uh, same as uh, same as the sign in page, right? Um, this page is just as mission critical as logging in, and therefore we should test everything to reach 100% confidence, right? So just like the login page, we test all the content and every form of submission error and success state. Now, once logged in, uh, we create a setting spec that tests modifying our user details. Uh, we test that the form prefills its values and test the various error and success states, right? We also have a logout button on this page, which should clear the session and redirect us back to the home page. I also create an article spec to test all of the behavior of listing, filtering, and favoriting articles on the home page. Um, I'd use the network layer of Cypress to actually verify that the data returned from the server is, di is displayed uh, correctly, such as the author, the article title, article body, links to the article details. Um, I'd also use Cypress to test the edge cases, such as like what the loading indicator looks like when the requests are in flight, um, and uh, what happens when the server returns no results, or even what happens when the server is down, right? Uh, I test this global fee uh, feed, which acts as a filter for these articles, and also test that uh, we can paginate to the next page. Uh, we can also test uh, that this favor button increments the count. Um, yeah, uh, we also have a list of tags, and when they're clicked, uh, these are also filter the main list that you're on, either your feed or global feed, right? So there's actually quite a, quite a lot of the behavior here. Um, just a couple more. Uh, we've got an article spec here for displaying the details of an article. And once again, we would verify the displayed content matches the fetched data. And we'd also test that the buttons uh, work for editing the article, deleting the article. Uh, we'd also test listing the comments, creating new ones, and, uh, and deleting existing ones. Um, I'd also create an author spec for displaying the details of an author. Sort of repeats itself, right? So same thing, we verify content, uh, we test the filters for articles, and we test the follow author button. Now, uh, we also have what appears to be a bug because the developers of Conduit didn't use Cypress to test their app while they were building it, and so we're logged in as Joe, not Caitlin, so probably editing the profile for Caitlin shouldn't exist. All right, last but not least, I'd have a new article spec uh, dedicated to creating new articles. Uh, we test that it sends the right payload to the server and generates a new record in the database if we had chosen uh, not to stub out the network. Okay, great. So here's what our specs would look like in Cypress, right? Each spec is focused around an individual page, and this provides us a structure to test each spec in isolation from the others. I'd probably take this one step further and additionally organize my specs uh, in folders that group the primary data model objects between the pages, right? So user has login, uh, register settings, articles has the list, creating a new one, and then the individual article details. Now the odd spec, spec out here is uh, header. Uh, because it's not an individual page, it's shared, it's common amongst all uh, the rest of the application. But regardless though, I would still test its behavior in isolation from the rest of the specs, right? So now that we've laid out our organizational structure, I'll demonstrate how to write and test them in isolation. But first, we'll need to make a decision uh, what to test, right? So although the Conduit application has several pages that are publicly accessible, uh, the vast majority of the interesting ones are hidden behind uh, logging in, a situation that you're likely familiar with with your own apps. So logging in is unfortunately the first and hardest thing that you will do when writing tests um, in Cypress and probably anywhere as well, right? And um, so we know, like, we can basically look at this as a dependency graph. We know that in order to access any of these pages, that we have to first log in to establish a session. But what's challenging is that in order to log in, well, we first have to have a registered user. And to even have a registered user, we need a persistence layer, something such as a server or database, right? So let's investigate a few different strategies for solving this challenge. So I'll group these strategies into three basic principles. The first is to simply use Cypress to stub out all the requests that would hit your server otherwise, right? This is actually my preferred and favorite way. So stubbing out the server enables you to build ahead of the back end. Uh, it's lightning fast, and it's easy to generate uh, whatever it is that you want, right? Requests for data are intercepted by Cypress, which means that there's no database. There's nothing to see. There's nothing to reset. There's nothing to query. You simply trick your application in believing it has a valid session token based on what your app think it does when it's logged in, right? Now, the downsides are is that it's not really a true end-to-end -end test, right? Stubbing out responses means that they won't reach your server, right? So where's the data going to come from, right? Well. You likely need to create fixtures, which are our static set of data in order uh, to be returned, right? 
Now, this can be partially mitigated, though, with a little elbow grease. Uh, you could write API layer integration tests um, in another testing tool and then automatically save those responses from your server as fixtures to be used inside of Cypress. So that way, you're using your server to generate the fixtures, and that ensures that they're always up to date, and it provides coverage between the client and server contract. All right. Second strategy, the second strategy uh, is just to uh, seed your server uh, with, with a static uh, user, right? Um, this user will have a predetermined set of credentials, and this is the basic method that we'll be using later in these slides, right? Uh, the benefit of this strategy is that you'll be logging in as a real user and establishing a real session with your server, right? But making this work means that your server's really got to be up and running, right? And um, you, uh, you either need to seed the database before starting the tests, or you need to work out a way to do it from within the tests themselves, right? And the biggest uh, downside to this method is that if you only ever see the user once, that means that all of your tests can potentially build up state and affect one another. So if you log in with Joe and you create a bunch of records in one test, well then on subsequent tests, uh, Joe's really going to have all those records. So you've got to be careful or you've, uh, you need to reset your database uh, before each test just with this uh, static seeded user, right? All right. Third strategy is just to create a dynamic user before every single test, right? This is ideal because it means that there is zero chance of building up database state that can affect tests downstream. Uh, this strategy is very flexible, it's very powerful, um, but we have to handle database setup and teardown in the tests themselves, likely by writing a hook that clears out the state before each test. Therefore, this is the slowest and most complex method. And as I uh, mentioned, we'll primarily be using the second strategy in these slides. But the good news is, is that none of these strategies are actually mutually exclusive. Uh, in other words, there's use cases for all three. And you may find yourself using all of them uh, to test different parts of your application. All right, so with all that covered, let's start writing our actual login spec, right? So here, we're going, to be, uh, we're going to use a before each hook to visit the login page over and over again for each test. And this means that our browser will navigate to this page, wiping out the state from the previous tests. And early in the slides, we went over the various states of the login page. And here's a, uh, an outline of the six tests that I would write in order to cover everything. So specifically, we're testing the greeting text, the link to register an account, the email validation, the password validation, the email and password validation, and finally, a successful login. And best practice when writing tests in Cypress is to iterate on a single one at a time. Not two, not a group, just one. So here's how we write each test. So testing uh, the greeting text uh, can be done in just a single sci.contains command to ensure that the H1 contains the text that we care about. Next test, to ensure the um, anchor has need an account uh, with the proper href, uh, hashtag slash register, right? And you might notice that we actually didn't click through this link to verify that it goes to the registration page. Well, that's because we're testing the sign in spec in isolation. We don't need to test the browser's default behavior. We know activating an anchor link updates the browser's URL. So this saves us from having the login spec knowing any details about the registration page. That knowledge will and should only exist in the registration spec. So to test that our email is required, um, we simply just submit an empty form by clicking on the sign-in button. And Cypress indicates to us the reaction to this event. Um, our application made a post to the API, and then our server sent back a 422 status code. Testing the password validation is just as simple. The only difference here is that we pressed enter during the type to trigger the form submission. So in the previous test, we used a uh, click. Uh, and uh, you notice, uh, yeah, right, we used a click on the sign-in button, right? So uh, these tests, both methods of ensuring that the form submits itself correctly. Uh, and our final validation test, uh, we've submitted a valid email but an incorrect password and added an assertion about the error message itself. All right. So this last test finally verifies that a user can successfully log in. Now remember, we've preceded our database with credentials that we know up front. So the question is, after we submit the form, how do we verify that we're actually logged in? Well, at the moment, all we really care about is asserting that the hash of the URL points us to the main default homepage. And just like in our previous test, we don't add assertions about the homepage because we're the login spec. That's not our responsibility. We'll leave that for the homepage, which is the article spec. And it's worth noting, uh, another cool thing that Cypress does to indicate is indicate to us when there are page events, right? So such as the URL changing. And um, uh, this is the snapshot that Cypress captured uh, the moment that our application updated the URL. And you can see the home page is loading. And um, here's, here's just a movie of all the tests running, right? 
So um, we can use the UI to restart all the tests. Um, we'll expand the first test, and notice that Cypress restores the DOM to what it looked like when this command finished. Um, some commands like click even take snapshots before and after they resolve. Um, and uh, we can also open the successful login test and inspect some of the network requests that logged out. Uh, we take snapshots when the request is sent, another one when the response is returned. So we can see the UI populating when the data comes back from the server, right? It's pretty cool. All right, so with our login spec complete, we can assume now that we have 100% confidence it's working correctly. And we can move on to our next spec, the user profile settings. If you remember, the user settings page allows us to modify details about the current logged in user. And uh, we'll start our settings spec by structuring it just like the login, by visiting the settings before each test, right? Now the problem here, though, is that we won't be logged in yet, because Cypress automatically clears things like the cache, the cookies, and local storage before each test, right? Uh, but it does so on purpose uh, to not prevent uh, building up state between your tests, right? So in order to access this page, we need to log in first. And let's explore how we'd make that happen. Since we've already written the login steps, we know exactly what's needed, right? We need to visit the login page, fill out the form, wait for a URL to match the home page, right? So hey, why couldn't we just paste this code into the settings spec, right? Uh, I mean, that'll work, but it's not uh, a great idea, right? Why? So I mean, we'd be duplicating our code, we'd be potentially introducing some brittle selectors, and the settings page doesn't know anything about the sign-in, right? And it shouldn't be affected by it if it changes. So really, what's needed? Well, we've already identified that logging in is a core dependency that every authenticated page will need to do. So we need to create some sort of abstraction that's reusable and is decoupled from needing to know the implementation details of logging in. In this case, the best approach would just be to create a custom command called login, because this command is going to be needed by every other spec. So let's take a look at creating this in Cypress. Now, when you initially added your project to Cypress, we scaffolded out a suggested folder structure for you, and we seeded an index.js support file here. The support file is special in that it's bundled separately from your spec files, and it's always served to the browser first. So that means anything that you put in there will be evaluated before any of your spec code runs. And this is the perfect place to put global configuration or custom commands that alter the way that Cypress behaves. Now, we understand that Cypress can sometimes feel a bit magical, and that's both a blessing and a curse. And although this is documented, we've seen many users fail to understand how spec and support files interact with each other. Um, well, guess what? I mean, this is it. There's really not much to see. When you go to run a spec, we simply process the support file and serve it uh, before your spec code, right? So this is why the, ev the browser evaluates it first. I mean, that's it. Uh, everything else follows the normal rules that you're already accustomed to. So for instance, if we open the support slash index.js file in our text editor and we strip out all the comments, you'll see it only has one line basically just import commands.js. So writing code in your spec or support files is no different than how you're currently writing modern JavaScript apps, uh, apps with React or Angular or whatever framework, right? So just like with your app code, all of your test code gets pre-processed and bundled up uh, in order to be served to the browser. So the commands uh, file is a great place to put our new custom login command. And so all we've done here is copy and paste the steps that we used earlier to log in. And now we can come back to our settings spec and complete our first test here. We can, um, well, we first uh, log in uh, and then visit the settings page before each test, and then we just uh, ensure that the H1 contains the greeting text um, um, that we expect uh, to be there, right? So when we run this test, as we expected, it works, it's green. So I guess we're all good, right? Time to move on. Well, uh, not so fast. So there's a few things that concern me about this test. Um, currently, our site.login command is written like a macro, right? Like all it really does is execute seven other Cypress commands, right? And this is what bothers me, because these seven commands represent most of the steps for this test, and they create a lot of noise from the side effects of the applications, such as network requests and URL changes, right? And down below it, our real test only issued two commands. And the goal here is to only test the settings page. So that means by introducing the login page, we have failed to test it in isolation. And the problem with this custom site login command is because we've already independently tested the login steps in isolation, we're already at 100% confidence that they work. Repeating them in other steps adds 0% more confidence. It's like just repetitive login steps are all downside, and there's absolutely no upside to use them whatsoever, right? And the other thing that bothers me is the duration of this test, 1.15 seconds, right? Now, initially you may think, I'm crazy, that sounds super fast, um, 
but logging in accounted for the majority of the work that we did in this test. And 1.15 seconds, it's at the moment, an adequately fast feedback loop, right? But this relatively simple application is running on localhost, and it's much more performant than the majority of your applications out there due to its simplicity, right? And I mean, how many of your production or even development apps actually log in in one second? In the real world, it's not unreasonable to wait three, five seconds just to log in, right? And if you're coming from Selenium, though, taking three to five seconds would probably be a dream. But Cypress is a very, very different tool with a very different use case, right? The most effective workflow that we find is building and testing your app through Cypress all at the same time, right? So meaning you use your tests to literally iteratively work on and write your features to drive the development step by step. You just write partial tests that are incomplete while you're working on the feature until you know what you want and you complete the test, right? And once you get into that flow, you'll be working in that mode every day, right? So it's not unusual when you're doing that to run hundreds of tests locally per day per developer who's implementing it. And those extra three to five seconds that come before every single test means that on every single code change in your test code or your app code, every single iteration will add those three to five seconds. And the goal is to reduce the test feedback loop to an absolute bare minimum and squeeze out every wasted second that's not necessary so you can respond and develop as fast as possible, right? And since logging in is literally the cornerstone of what every single app and every single test will do, we need to optimize it, and we only need to optimize it once, and then we'll reap all the reward. So let's see how we can actually log in without using the UI. And in order to do that, let's dissect how logging in actually works in our example application. So step one is that our login page has a form submit event handler already wired up. When that fires, step two is then to read off the form values for email and password. Step three is then to make a post request to this URL for our API server along with this JSON payload, the body. Now, upon successfully validating the uh, request body, the server would, step four is for the API server to send back a JSON response payload of the user. And our application code then extracts the token out of the payload and saves it to local storage. And it also adds this token to all request headers so that the API server can authenticate subsequent requests coming from our application. Now, setting the token into local storage is similar to how browser cookies work. It's state that persists even after opening and closing the browser. And what this means is that when our application is closed and reopened, uh, it has to have some way of getting this token and setting it back on the, uh, the request headers again. So step five is that when our application first loads, it checks to see if the token is already in local storage. And if it is, it goes ahead and sets it on the request agent. So this mechanism right here it acts as a seam that we can tap into. This is literally the integration point between the application's logic and the browser state. And this is what we can directly manipulate to cause the desired effect of logging in without ever touching the UI. So back in our custom login command, let's just go ahead and remove these steps. And we're going to add a new Cypress command called Cytit request. So that request makes HTTP requests, but it does so outside the constraints of the browser. It's not bound by cores or any other security restrictions, which means that we can use it to do anything that we want. And the amazing thing about Sidat request is that it actually uses the browser's user agent and cookie store. So that means it will appear and, and behave exactly as if it did come from the browser, but it's not bound by any of the restrictions. OK, so we take this, we send a post to the same API endpoint as you already saw our application did, and we attach the same body payload as our application as well. Now we get back the response that our server sends, and now we just set the same user token to local storage. And we can do all of this prior to even visiting our app, because Cypress itself is bound to the same origin as your application, and therefore can read and modify local storage synchronously. And this is it. It's amazingly easy once you get the concept. So coming back to our settings spec, this is before we made the changes to the login command. And previously, it executed seven commands with 1.15 seconds of duration. And running our test now results in only a single command, and the test finishes four to five times faster. And so by stitching all this together flawlessly, our application is none the, wise, uh, none the wiser. Right? We've successfully created a really powerful mechanism to test each of our specs in complete isolation without losing a single percent of confidence. So this is the single most important concept for you to understand and master. And we can take this and actually apply this anywhere. It's infinitely scalable. And with Cypress, we're no longer forced into testing and repeating every aspect of our application like a real user. We have the power to control anything and everything uh, and take as many shortcuts as we want. So leveraging this principle means that we don't have to, nor should you ever, use the UI to build up state. Instead, 
just set state directly and begin the test from that point forward. All the ceremony of needing to share page objects instantly evaporates with this philosophy. You should always strive to test pages in total isolation. Everything will become faster, less coupled, and you won't lose a single point of confidence that it's all working together correctly. You don't need to limit yourself trying to act and replicate everything a user would do, because in Cypress, you have total control and native access to everything in your application, even the application itself. So this level of access means that you have no real constraints. You're not limited to just talking to an external uh, server or stubbing the network layer to control the state. For example, you could control how your application responds to system time. With Sci clock, you can set dates to something static that you choose so your tests run relative to something in your control. You can even force set timeouts and set intervals to fire when you want them to, avoiding the need to uh, wait for long polling or timeouts to fire. You can even stub objects that you have references to exactly the same way that you would in your unit test. You can force callbacks to fire, functions to throw errors, promises to resolve, and you can assert things that uh, were called with the right arguments. So uh, you want to test that your application logs something to the console? Uh, easy, just stub console.log like any other method, right? Um, and the coolest thing we can do is we can actually utilize our application state and stores directly to dispatch events and force it to respond programmatically. And this enables you to instantly take control and place your application exactly where you want it. So here's an example. This is in our conduit example application. And by exposing our Redux store when we're running tests in Cypress, we can now directly interact with this object and programmatically control it. So back in our settings spec, uh, we get direct access to the store so um, we can get direct access to it and actually dispatch uh, the, uh, the logout message, right? Um, and then we simply just assert that the login token set in local storage uh, has been nuked uh, by our application um, uh, logging out, logging out of the current user. All right, so uh, by following these best practices, uh, you'll set yourself up for success by avoiding the common problems that traditionally plague end to end tests. Um, hopefully, you'll give Cypress a go, and if you haven't, we've written tons of docs, guides, and recipes to help you get started along with creating uh, nine tutorial videos that show it in action, right? 